So now that we've been introduced to a couple of sequences, let's talk about how to determine if a sequence converges or diverges, and if it converges, to what value does it converge? <clears throat> so first sequence we're going to take a look at is a sub n is equal to 3 plus 5n squared over n plus n squared. Now for this, as a reminder, something converges if we can take the limit and as n goes to infinity of a sub n and actually come up with a value. If we come up with a value, then it converges to that value. So we're going to consider the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 plus 5n squared over n plus n squared. Now if we simply allow n to go to infinity, your numerator goes to infinity and your denominator goes to infinity. A couple different ways that we can deal with this. One of them would be to make use of L'Hopital's rule and differentiate the top and the bottom with respect to the appropriate number or appropriate variable, in this case n. So differentiating the top with respect to n, the constant goes away, we would get 5 times 2n, that'll be 10n, that rhymes. And in the denominator we would get 1 plus 2n. As n goes to infinity, we would still wind up with something of the form infinity over infinity. So if we apply L'Hopital's rule once again and differentiate again, 10n would become 10, and 1 plus 2n would become 2. This is something that we can determine, and that would be 5. Now, the alternative approach for this one, and this will be relevant as we're going forward, is the other thing that you can do is figure out the largest power of n in the denominator and divide top and bottom by that largest power of n, or multiply by 1 over n squared in this case distributing that through to every single term that's in the fraction. This would be 3 over n squared plus 5n squared over n squared, which would be 5. n over n squared in the denominator would be 1 over n, and n squared over n squared would be 1. Now as n goes to infinity, anything with an n in the denominator is going to wind up going to 0. As such, we would be left with 5 over 1, which again would be 5. So what we can say is the sequence converges to 5. So eventually, as soon as we get out to a certain number of um, n, whether it's a thousand or a million or a trillion or whatever, basically the sequence will look like 5, comma, 5, comma, 5, comma, 5, and so forth and so on. For our next example, we're going to deal with some exponentials. Our numerator is 4 to the n, and the denominator is 1 plus 9 raised to the n power. So we are going to try a similar trick to what we did for the other one. Now, as a reminder, if the base of an exponential is less than 1, but still positive, then the limit as n goes to infinity of that exponential happens to be 0 probably should have used b for this, so I'm going to change those a's into b's. b for the base of an exponential. Now the reason that that's relevant for this one is we're going to do a similar strategy as what we saw for the previous problem. Now by similar strategy I mean similar to what we did here. Figure out the biggest term in the denominator and divide top and bottom by it. And that'll be 1 over 9 to the n power and 1 over 9 to the n power. So we'll be taking the limit as n goes to infinity of, <clears throat> sorry, probably should have written this down first. This will be the limit as n goes to infinity. Now if we apply the thing that we did right here, your numerator is going to be 4 ninths raised to the n power. Your denominator will be 1 over 9 to the n power plus 9 to the n divided by 9 to the n will be equal to 1. If we now allow n to go to infinity and use this principle over here, 4 ninths is less than 1, so the limit as n goes to infinity of that will be 0. 1 over 9 to the n, similar thing, this is basically 1 ninth raised to the n power, that'll be 0 as well, and we will wind up getting 0 for this. So we would say the sequence converges to zero. So a couple of convergent sequences to start. Let's go ahead and try a couple more. 
Next up, a sub n is going to be equal to the natural log of n divided by the natural log of 2n. So we will, once again, take the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n. Natural log of n looks kind of weird. Over the natural log of 2n. In this one, the numerator is going to infinity, the denominator is going to infinity, so what we're going to do is apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, to apply L'Hopital's rule, we differentiate the top with respect to n. Derivative of the natural log of n is going to be 1 over n. And for the natural log of 2n, that'll be 1 over 2n times 2 from the chain rule. So if we proceed to simplify as much as possible, this will be 1 over n divided by 1 over 2n times 2 over 1 would be 1 over n as well. That's going to wind up being equal to 1. So in this case, we would say that the sequence converges to 1. And for our fourth and final example, we have a couple of factorials in here. a sub n is equal to 2n minus 1 factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial. Now, as a reminder for those who maybe haven't dealt with factorials on a regular basis, when you have a factorial, you are saying multiply by every single number all the way down to 1. So factorials, for now, will only apply to positive integers. An example of one such factorial would be something like 6 factorial. 6 factorial would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and if you were to actually multiply all that out, you would get 720. Now, factorials do come with an interesting property, though. You'll notice that all of these guys would be multiplying by 5 all the way down to 1 and that this would be 6 times 5 factorial. We refer to this as a process of expanding the factorial. The general rule for expanding a factorial is that it looks like the following. n factorial is the same as saying n times n minus 1 factorial. Now this works basically as long as n is a positive number. Now, in our case, we have 2n minus 1 factorial and 2n plus 1 factorial. So before I take a limit, what I'm going to do is say which one of those factorials is the bigger one. The bigger one would happen to be the one in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is expand this factorial. 2n plus 1 factorial says multiply 2n plus 1 by every single positive integer below it. And every single positive integer below it would be the next number down, factorial, just like we got 6 times 5 factorial over here. I'm going to do it again. Numerator is going to stay as is. Denominator is going to become 2n plus 1, and I'm going to expand 2n factorial. So it'll be 2n times the number right below it, factorial. So when I start with the bigger factorial, if I expand the factorial enough times, I'm guaranteed to get down to whatever the smaller factorial is. So essentially what's going on with our sequence is, if I expand this, our sequence is actually 1 over 4n squared plus 2n. Now if I were to take the limit as n goes to infinity of that, there's really very little calculation to do. Your numerator is 1 and your denominator goes to infinity, that would be 0. So we would say therefore the sequence converges to 0. Now we haven't done a single divergent sequence yet, so I'm going to show you a classic example of a sequence that diverges. So for this one we're going to say that a sub n is equal to negative 1 raised to the n power. Now, what I'm going to do is write down the first few terms of this sequence, starting with n equals 1. So this would be negative 1 to the first power, negative 1 squared, negative 1 to the third power, negative 1 to the fourth power, negative 1 to the fifth power, negative 1 to the sixth power, the seventh power, the eighth power, etc. 
you'll notice that essentially what's going on is that thing, this thing is just bouncing back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1. The graph of this sequence, if graphed, would look like the following. So we'll add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This would be negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, and it just repeats back and forth between those two things for all eternity. Now the reason that this uh, sequence excuse me, is divergent is because it does not ever stop on one single number. It's going to continue to keep doing what it's doing, just bouncing back and forth between these two values. This sequence is divergent because it never actually stops on any one particular value. Now, the other situation where a sequence could diverge is if it tends toward either plus or minus infinity. We will see plenty of those working in future problems.